Welcome to the Creative Academy, your go-to source for accountability, coaching, and community for writers. I'm Donna Barker, and today I'm talking to Kirsten Ma, who is a writer of middle grade fiction. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I've been, I've had the pleasure of working with Kirsten in a mastermind group, and um, she had mentioned at some point that she is, uh, has been part of a book club for five years now. Is that right? Yeah, about that. And you started this book club. Yes. Yeah, myself and uh, two other non-writer friends started. Um, I'm the last one standing. <laughs> the last one. So both, both of the founders have since one moved away and one has decided that her life is too chaotic for a book club. And uh, so and then so now I'm kind of running it. And it's, But you've got um, other people. It's not just you oh, and yourself. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there, are other, there are other members. It isn't just me. But yeah, the original, the original founders have uh, yeah. dropped off except for me. Right. So I thought it would be really interesting to talk to you about the value that being in a book club has to you as a writer. So yes. that's what we're going to be talking about today. And uh, so, yeah, so you've just started to tell me a little bit about it. What, what do you want to share about that book club? Like, what kind of books do you read? Um, are you fiction, nonfiction? Because you're writing middle grade. Are there, any other, are there any other writers in your book club? No, no other writers. Uh, there have been at times other teachers and um, um, people who've been sort of book lovers for a long time, but no, no other writers in, uh, that I know of. I mean, there could be somebody who was writing and I wasn't aware of it, but um, certainly when we were a bigger group, there were people I didn't know as well. Uh, but we read all over the place. Um, we've always, we, it's always been run in a way that we, we do different genres. We don't focus on one genre and it changes from year to year. And um, I right away off the bat didn't really want to be the person who was telling everyone what to read. So we tend to uh, generate suggestions for genres uh, put those in a hat, draw them out, and then we find a variety of ways to find titles, whether that's uh, one year I looked at bestseller lists, another year I just took uh, nominations from everybody. Uh, this year we decided to do some of our genres, uh, or some of our books were chosen off of uh, an online reading group. Uh, Reese Witherspoon runs a oh, yeah, yeah. group. So the, the ladies who were involved were like, well, I'm, I'm intrigued by the titles that are on this. So we took her, there was a list of her top 15 that, that are sort of well-loved books. I kind of threw those in the hat and we drew out half of the year for that with, with those titles. And they tend to be women's uh, fiction. So uh, I guess we'll be reading six titles of, or five titles of women's fiction this year. And then the rest of the, this year, we've gone with different genres. So I picked all sorts of genres threw them in a hat and what came out really was very surprising uh, and I am not sure how it's going to be received but we're going to be reading graphic novel this year we're going to be reading poetry one month and we're also going to be reading a collection of short stories oh wow very yeah. diverse yeah and then because the the people that I'm involved with again I should say all women because we don't have any men in our group but the women that I'm involved with um uh want to be challenged and want to be introduced to some different books, but they don't really know where to start. Mm -hmm. So they tend to look to me to kind of be their conduit to um, book titles and um, that, that sort of thing. Cause they, 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 they all know that I'm a writer. So they kind of feel that I have my finger on the pulse, I guess. Um, That's so neat. And yeah. it's a real, I've not, I've not heard of that approach to choosing books for a book club. It's a really yeah. neat approach. It's very democratic. Yes, it's worked out really well and it's worked out really badly. Like there are months where the book that was chosen um, for a few Februarys in a row, we choose either, uh, we, we kind of go bounce back and forth. We either do a romance or we have done erotica. We read very widely. <laughs> and uh, so the one year that we did it, people got titles and nobody really knew what to do. And so people were asking around and like one friend made the suggestion and it was chosen, but it was something we all universally hated. 
and it wasn't and it ended up being and why we hated it was because <laughs> we were expecting erotica and it was um a name it was an a name nin and it was very literary and we were all like uh we kind of were <laughs> looking for something a little bit more <laughs> more stimulating and that was not enough for us and so yeah there have been times when it's been a spectacular failure uh but other times when um people have really been introduced to genres or subject matter that they would never have picked up themselves and really found themselves liking it. And do you apply that to yourself too? Are you finding that you're reading things you never would have picked up? Oh, definitely. I think one of the benefits for me and why I continue, I mean, I would always be reading. I am a reader and whether I was reading with, uh, again, some of the people that I'm with, they feel that they wouldn't read if they weren't involved. Mm -hmm. So that's why even though we, 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 we had dwindled down to four members at the beginning of this year, uh, but they were all adamant. Like if, if I don't read with you, I'm not going to read. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know, that's great. Well, it's not good. I'm going to read anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me. Um, but what it helps me is uh, I think I would spend a lot of time reading compar uh, comparable titles or things that um, I were, was comfortable with because I would always feel like I should be um, working towards my work in progress or whatever. And what this does instead is I sometimes full on just uh, picking a book and reading for enjoyment. And it's always a, a good to remember that. Right. Uh, that, you know, separated, that it is a joy and it's not just a work sort of thing. Um, and so like the, the book I'm reading this month where we're, re we're reading it for October is one I've wanted to read, but it had no bearing on anything that I'm writing right now. So it was kind of very low on the list. And so it got drawn. And because I'm reading it for book club, I feel like I have permission to right to read it and that I'm loving it. I love the pacing again. And I'm, I learn things always when I do read the fiction, it's just in the, in, in my time, um, I, I need something to push me. So when I, I run as well, well, I used to, I had, can't say I'm doing very much right now, but one of the things that kept me going was I would sign up for races every once in a while. And mm -hmm. I would be like, okay, well, I'm going to have to show up and do the running. So it kind of kept me at it. And this, does the same thing for me in terms of reading fiction. Right, right. If you're reading, let's say, literary mm -hmm. or, or romance, mm -hmm. are you able to draw things out of that writing that you can apply to your middle grade writing? Or does, is that just, you're just doing it for the love of it and you put your writing aside when you're reading? It depends what I'm reading. I do find myself uh, especially if it's a book that I enjoy, I'm enjoying reading, I'll always ask myself, how is the author creating this? I can't always use a lot of it. Um, I'm always amazed by, for instance, in romance, if there's any like love scenes or anything, because I don't have to do any of that. <laughs> and so that part I, I kind of tuck away for perhaps the future. Like, oh, okay, so that's how they do it. But then I can also say, okay, well, if they have this love scene, if I were going to put that in my middle grade novel, how would I change it? And so that, that it's, it's, it's a comparison. It's a, you can, like you can say, well, this is, this, is, this is what we have. How can I adapt it for, for my own work? And I think that that's instructive in that it kind of opens things up for me. And I, there's always techniques that you can learn from anyone that you are reading um, and things to like and not like as well. Um, I, I, I find one of the reasons I love reading middle grade is that there's always a sense of hope. And that is one thing I do miss sometimes when I'm reading, um, some of the literary in particular, I, I find actually quite a slog to read personally, because I don't, I find that, that I haven't, maybe it's just the ones that I've chosen to read, but I, I miss that sense of wonder and hope that kind of always underpins a middle grade novel and I, I so it reaffirms my choice to write in the genre um, because it, I do drive a lot of joy in sharing that and reminding yes. everybody that that's part of um, of the world um, yeah. and I sometimes it's I sometimes I really miss it when I read adult novels right for for authors who are no, okay, so you're, you're never really taking off your writer's hat, but it's, or maybe it's, it's kind of sitting there on the side of the desk. Yeah, I yeah. guess, right? Um, now, have, have you ever had your book club read anything that you've written? Is that something they've ever asked? 
no, no, they have never asked. And I, I, I don't know. Um, it, I'm not at the point with the work that I'm in that I would feel confident in having, having them read it. When I got to that point, I think it would be very instructive to have them. And I would be interested to see what they have to say, but um, I've never, I've never kind of crossed the two worlds. I haven't at this point, uh, uh, but that's also because I understand the demands that they all have on their time. So we meet once a month and um, for some of the ladies getting through the book in the one month is a challenge for mm -hmm. them with their schedules and everything. So um, I, I can't say that I'm a really strict book club leader. Like if, if people haven't finished the work or uh, they haven't, you know, even sometimes it's been months when the people, when people come and they haven't even cracked the book. <laughs> and so it's more about, well, you know, great. At least you, you tried or now you're exposed to it and maybe someday you'll read it. And it's, it's more that sort of an environment type. Um, we, uh, we very have one foot very firmly in the social uh, club aspect mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. as well. so. It's funny. I, I did try to start a book club in the little community I'm in, mm -hmm. uh, which very quickly became clear to me that even though, even though these are all really um, smart women who do read mm -hmm. the challenge of coming up with a book that everyone said that they'd be willing to read was impossible. And so we started an article club. Yeah. And that's, that, that was fabulous for a couple of years and mm -hmm. it's degraded into meeting without even bothering to have an article, <laughs> but when we were, it's, yeah. it's, which is disappointing because it was, it really was, you know, you'd find an article in the New Yorker. So, mm -hmm. you know, like five or 10 pages long and it would be on a topic that yeah. everybody could discuss. And we really got to know each other quite well yes. uh, in this community, but the book club thing just hasn't. So it's been, uh, yeah, no, I was going to say I was part of a book club very briefly back when I lived in the city. Yeah, um, but I never have been. It's, it's kind of funny, though. Uh, and I think that's one of the instructive things for me as a writer, how people f have this desire to read, but feel that they that they don't have the time. And that is a puzzle to me. And so I do I kind of ask, what is it that keeps you from reading. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I do sometimes struggle to find time in the reading, but to be like, to be honest, I don't find it that hard, even with my schedule to read for 30 minutes to an hour every day. And I don't read before bed because I fall asleep. So I, in the other parts of my day, I do find the time. And I, I don't know whether it's um, because I give my, myself permission to, uh, I don't know if it was because my mother was a big reader. And so uh, she would sit down and read and we weren't allowed to talk to her. And that was how it was kind of raised. Like, no, I'm reading. And um, so, uh, you know, she had taken that time for herself and maybe that's kind of disseminated down to me. Um, and now disseminated to your kids. Oh yeah, for sure. All of them will just wherever. And so, and so much so that I've added like a chaise in my office and a bunch of other kind of places where people can just kind of sit and read whenever and everybody, you know, there's just books everywhere. And in fact, it's kind of funny that I sometimes I'm like, there's a giant stack of books on my stairs, which the girls have kind of been reading and they just, I find books everywhere. And I'm like, well, I suppose it could be worse, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, but these other women that are in my club, they don't, I don't know if they haven't given themselves the permission. I'm not sure what that is. Mm -hmm. And so that is as a writer, something that I do think about when I'm, when I'm writing, particularly because I write middle grade, because um, as I see with my students now, because they're right kind of in that age range, some kids really love to, uh, to read and others um, they stop. And I don't know what it is really that causes it. So just kind of creating an environment which encourages people mm -hmm. to keep at it, which is probably why, you know, as, as um, distressing as it is sometimes when people come and they haven't read, um, the, I wanted to reward them for even the, I'm going to try it. Like I, I'm, I'm committed and I'm going to keep coming. Yeah. In fact, yeah. like in the, in the fall, one of the ladies who dropped away last year, I, I included her in the beginning email. I know you were busy last year, but how are you feeling this year? And I wanted to know that she's welcome to come back whenever mm -hmm. she wants because um, yeah, we have to, I guess, create a culture where we, we um, will read um, and, and make time for it because uh, people really in this time crunch think that a novel is, is too much. 
Right. It's funny. It sounds as a, as a writer, you're asserting some social change power as well in, in running your book club. Oh, I think that that's an aspect for me. Definitely. Um, the, 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 the two women, they're kind of the stalwarts. And they, I said at the end, I was like, well, what do you guys think? Are we going to continue next year? And they were like, Oh, please, please. And they know that this is an area that I have expertise in and that they can count on me to organize things. And it's not a, it's not a giant commitment on my part. I don't feel. And so, um, but it, it's keeping them. It's I'm, I'm their accountability buddy in that way. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that, that's another reason why I keep at it. So do you, do you uh, rely on the book, the questions for book clubs at the back of books, or do you come up with questions yourself? How do you facilitate those meetings? There are some really great websites uh, that uh, some of them have some like general questions to ask about fiction. I, I can't say often in, as a way to keep my load a little bit lighter. I will fully admit that I will always find, try to see if I can find questions online. Um, but I tend to teach that way too. I like and, or, and cook that way. I want to see if there's a recipe out there and if it fits the way it is great. If it doesn't, I'll edit. Um, and I bring them, I often, uh, if there are questions specifically about the work, I will send them um, ahead of time so people can read them. Although um, we used to kind of answer more. Now people are feeling a bit more confident to just sort of look at them and then answer them off the cuff. Uh, I kind of play it by ear. Um, we, we read a historical fiction novel over the summer and we met last week for our first meeting. And uh, I think I got to one or two questions, but the work itself was, it was a Jane Austen-esque kind of historic, or historical romance. And we could have gone into nitty gritty and I, um, I'll sometimes even throw in some of the writing questions, like what did you think about the pacing or things that I'm curious about? Mm -hmm. Um, but this book, I mean, it was, it was okay. It was kind of entertaining, but we often do that. Like our, our summer read is often like, you know, trashy beach novel or whatever, just to keep us kind of going. We'll see next, the next month we are going to be talking about the Alice network. And that's the one I'm reading right now. And I'm really engaged in it. And I have a feeling, uh, cause I know many of the people involved quite well that we will have quite a few things to discuss about specific characters and things that are happening in the novel. And, um, and I pointed out to them cause I, I ended up buying a secondhand copy of the um, trade paperback. The questions are in the back of the book already. Yeah. So I said, Hey, if you guys have that, check them out and see what you think. And if there's a question that you want, and now that I'm thinking about it, I should probably, start saying to them like, okay, your other homework besides reading the book is I want everyone to come with one question. And I've never done that before. I've always sort of um, had the questions. Um, and then that sometimes I found another website that even had like games and things that you could play. Like um, who would you cast as a person in the novel and um, sort of more like uh, teacher type ideas, I suppose, like for activities to do. Uh, and I did that sometimes when our group was bigger, just because the discussions could go on for a really long time. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's just a different way to kind of approach things. But yeah, I always look first to see what I can find. Um, and then I have also in the tucked away some sort of general questions about, um, mm -hmm. about fiction, about, I have ones for not, I have a set of questions for nonfiction and a set of questions for fiction. And they're, I mean, they're pretty basic, but. But, and you, you said sometimes you ask questions because you're interested in mm -hmm. how people will. And, and again, is that you're interested as a writer, understanding? Oh, oh definitely. Oh, yeah. definitely. So if there's something that people are have, finding contentious or like uh, somebody will be like, oh, I hated that character. And I, you know, having read it myself, I would be like, well, I didn't hate that character. Why is it that you hated that character? And then kind of, I mean, and it comes down to a lot of, there's so much personal taste. So I, one of the things as a writer that I'm heartened slash horrified about <laughs> is how much people will read it and they'll be like, didn't like it. And it can have, there can be absolutely very little, oh, they rubbed me the wrong way, or I never like people like that. And so um, I'm horrified because I think, oh my God, what if they think that about my work? But then I'm also, but but I'd be like, but that's nothing, that's nothing to do with me and everything to do with, with them. Yeah. So 
taken away some of that weight. Like I cannot please all the people all the time. I think that's the number one thing I've learned. You cannot. It's, it's, it's impossible. That actually sounds very empowering. You know, when people bring baggage with them from their own lives and, yeah. and experiences they've had with reading other things and um, there's not a lot you can you can't mm -hmm. control that. So you can't you can't control that. What you can control is how well it's written because we have written <laughs> uh, because we draw out of a hat. So last year I had one of our massive failures was in we read romance in uh, February, and what I had chosen to do was Indigo has top ten lists of of their books, and. Um, I thought, okay, well, that's a good, I'll just get the titles off of that because they were feeling, the other people were feeling a lot of pressure. Well, I don't know how to come up with the titles and I don't know what, you know, I'm, I'm trying, but we're not getting enough. So I said, okay, well, I'll just look at this and we'll go off of that. Now, I didn't realize, I mean, I just assumed it's Indigo, right? I just assumed that they were all really published books, but there were eBooks in there as well. So we ended up pulling this book, was an eBook written of a romance, but it was a very, badly written ebook and it was in their top 10 when I went back later and kind of tried to analyze how it had <laughs> it was in that price range you know that price range where the three like they there's all those people who churn it out and I'm not even sure that this book was fully edited before it was put on wow that's and I was like but it's on the bestseller list on indigo so that was a little eye-opening for me as well uh, and then I thought I felt really bad for uh, subjecting everybody to that. But it was interesting to talk to them about it because I wondered, I was like, I wondered, well, are they going to notice? Or are they not going to notice? And they, and they did. They did. They, all of them were like, and right away, then they came to, they were like, so what did you think of it right away as a writer? Like, and I was like, oh, first of all, I'm going to apologize because I had no idea. So I was able to educate them a little bit about that part of the industry and things to look for. Um, you know, they all said, well, I suppose if you were looking for something to read on the bus, it wouldn't be bad. And it's less than a cu cup of coffee. They did realize that part, but they were like, in the grand scheme of things, uh, that's not why I read. Like, I'm not right. trying to fill time. I do want to, to be. Uh, so, yeah. So that was an interesting conversation we had about about craft and about um, uh, and about um like editing process and that sort of thing. So again, they kind of looked to me to, to know some of those things. I, and I've always, I, as when I first started writing and people were telling me this stuff, I had no idea about how they place books in Indigo and all the marketing and all those sorts of things. So, um, you know, ho hopefully they're learning uh, some tips on how to choose good literature. Um, as, as are you, it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then later in the year, um, one of the ladies, um, through someone she knows, a friend, uh, the, the brother-in-law of this friend had written a book and it was another ebook. And I was like, Oh my goodness, I don't know about this. And she's like, well, here's the thing. Like if we read this, he's coming and he'll, he's willing to meet with our book club. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well that's a really great, great opportunity for them to actually speak to another writer, like one and they've read their, read their work cause they have not read mine. Mm -hmm. uh, and I thought I was a little nervous especially when I started reading the book, because while the story was fantastic, it was, an, the, this man wrote the story about his father's life. Um, it's called Flip Flops and Flying Cats, if you want to check it out. Like it is, this, you, couldn't, you couldn't make this stuff up. This man's father uh, decided he wanted to uh, live in Africa, but he couldn't get a job there because he's an Englishman and he was a gardener. He's like, okay, well, how can I live in Africa? How can I pay for that? And he decided, oh, I know. I'll, I'll deal drugs. I'll, I'll be a drug mule. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, and, uh, but then he got caught and he went to prison in Kenya. Um, and he was in prison for, I want to say a year, or 18 months, something like that. But I mean, this is a prison where they, they don't actually ever send white people there. So uh, anyway, so, so you can't make this, you cannot make this stuff up, but it was, um, I realized right away that um, he wrote it based well. And it, when we met with the author, a lot of my questions were answered. He basically interviewed his father mm -hmm. and wrote it how his father said, and that's how it read. It was very much like this. You were talking to this old Englishman, and he was telling you this story. 
which isn't necessarily what I look for in a book. So I think the ladies recognized that, but they were really engaged in it. And when we met with the author, he sort of admitted, well, he would really prefer it now to be a movie, which it would be an un un unbelievable movie. And he's actually trying to turn it into a screenplay. Oh, but, so it was a very interesting um, exercise and eye-opening to me to know that when there's a personal connection with an author, uh, readers are very much more forgiving than when you don't know this other woman. We had not met her, the romance novelist at all. It was very easy when there's no personal connection to just be like, well, that was trash. But when, it's, when you knew you're going to be meeting the author, that people are willing, it's, it humanizes the work and that they're willing to be, they were, we were all very engaged in the story because it's an unbelievable story. And they had great questions and it became more about the story because of the, we knew the author and less about the writing. The craft. The right. Craft. But yes. Yeah. Um, so if you were to be giving advice to a writer mm -hmm. or an author who was thinking that it might be valuable to them to start a book club, do you have, what, what would you recommend to them? Don't go into it with, the thought that it's going to be all about your writing because it's it, it I don't I don't think that you would get a lot of you'd get a lot of satisfaction out of that I think you have to join a book club and be involved with one because you love reading number one and you like you want to share that with others and um, when you share your passion with others um, and you sort of say to the world, I love these books, then amazing things happen. And if you then add, or I still you know you're always asking the questions in your you, you'd be amazed what you get. Um, out of the experience. But if you go in thinking, well, I'm going to have this book club because I want to, it's going to help me learn to be a, you know, a better writer. I'm not sure that would land very well with other people. I think they might feel like they were kind of like an experiment or right, a, a, like a mark, like what, what are those focus, like a focus, focus group. group. Right. And uh, um, I'm not sure how enjoyable that would be. And I think people would feel put on the spot. I'm thinking a lot of these things and I'll sometimes ask the question, but generally I'm listening to what they're saying, not making a point of always being about the writing because mm -hmm. they, they are all coming at it from different perspectives and I need to respect the perspectives that they are coming from um, and why they are involved in the book club and sort of try to find a balance uh, to meet everybody's needs, to make it enjoyable for everybody. I think that's great. I mean, great advice and also a lovely perspective. I mean, as writers, I assume most of us are writing to make someone's life more enjoyable while they're reading or teach them something or yeah. um, so. Uh, Kirsten, lovely to talk to you. It sounds like a really fun book club and it's kind of making me think I should really try again. Um, yeah, hmm. there are online alternatives, but I think they're very big. So, um, for instance, like Reese Witherspoon, I don't know how many thousands of people are involved in that. Um, and then who's the, the young, oh, why have I forgotten her name? I'm embarrassed. Uh, Hermione Granger. Oh, Emma Watson, yes. Yeah. Emma so Watson has yeah. got a really, really big one as well. Yes. So, but I think it would be very easy to kind of lurk around the edges of something that large and not really be connected. Um, so the opportunity is there, and I think that's fantastic, particularly for people who may be living in somewhere more isolated but you know if you look even through libraries I think uh, even the Fraser Valley Library I think they might even run some book clubs and so you can get involved that way um, mm -hmm. um, I did, yeah to me that's the the thing and if it were an online book club I know I would quickly not engage I would very quickly feel I have I have no reason to be committed to this group of people yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. and also I can admit that today, uh, I think I'm on day eight of not leaving my house. Oh. Um, I am very quickly moving towards that reclusive writer who sits in the woods and never goes out and, and asks other people to bring cream for the coffee because <laughs> I don't want to leave home. Uh, I think a book club, you know, when I think of a book club, I think, oh, there's a good excuse to get out of my house and yeah. interact yeah. with other humans. And I think mm -hmm. for the ladies that I'm involved with, we are all, are all also mothers. Yeah. So we all have that in common because we are a mothers. We do make an effort. We meet at our, each other's houses. Um, but then a couple times a year, we make a point of actually going 
to a pub or a bar or a, you know, making it more of kind of a social um, outlet. And my one friend, her husband travels a lot for work. She's often on her own. Her kids are involved in like multiple sports. This is the one time of month of a month of the month she sets aside and puts herself on the calendar, and that is mm-hmm. massive. So um, this is, you know, I want to support them in in um, doing things oh, for themselves and, and and finding something that they're passionate about. So that's why one other reason that I that I continue. Wow. I, I truly do see you as a social change advocate the way you speak about this. No, truly, truly. Yeah. It's fabulous. Kristen, thank you. And I, maybe it's an unfair question, but do you have a timeline on when your middle grade novel is coming out? Does it have a, a working title? Yes. It's called Wishful Thinking and it's a novel of magical realism. And uh, I had hoped to have this latest edit finished by the time I went to Surrey uh, that did not happen. It will not happen. I'm only about halfway through. So I think my new deadline for myself will be the end of the year. Uh, cause I've got this teaching gig going on and that's busy. Um, and so I've set aside some time to kind of get some work done before I go to Surrey. So I know that at least the front half is, uh, pretty tight so that I, I am meeting with an editor. That was why I made Surrey the, um, the deadline. I had a face-to-face meeting and I just Excellent. wanted it to be done. And, uh, so, and for, for folks who aren't aware, Surrey is the shorthand for yeah, the Surrey, for the Surrey Writers. Writers Conference. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. And then there are a lot of um, children's editors coming this year. So it would be, I just wanted to take the opportunity. So, I mean, that doesn't mean I can't, but it was just this deadline that I had set for myself. Uh, so yeah, no, but I feel confident that um, I will be able to complete it by the end of December. Although I've also committed to doing NaNoWriMo this year. <laughs> so we'll Oh, see. and you're going to start something new during NaNoWriMo? Uh, you won't be a rebel? I- well, I'm going to finish the novel I started last year. I got halfway finished um, when I was doing NaNoWriMo last year, and it's the no- this, it's sort of sitting there still. So I thought, well, well, yeah. you know, it's November again. We'll go back into that story, and we'll finish the second half. It's fantastic. Uh, that's, that is the plan. So I don't know. We'll take it as it comes. Uh, and that's, yeah. So that's plan A, but we can go down to Z if we need to. <laughs> <laughs> Great attitude. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kirsten, for sharing. And uh, we, will, we will see you over in the Creative Academy. Yes, definitely. Are you a member of the Creative Academy yet? Join us today and unlock a wealth of resources, masterclasses, feedback opportunities, and community events designed to help you reach the next step in your writing journey. No matter what stage you're at, we've got a helping hand to guide you along the way. Check out our free resource room if you'd like to get a taste of how we can help you reach your writing and publishing goals. Thank you for bringing us along on your writing and publishing journey. Crystal, Eileen, and I hope to see you around the Creative Academy soon.